A Kissing Handbook, Chester Raccoon, and the Acorn Full of Memories by Audrey Penn. Chester Raccoon climbed into his tree hollow and frowned. Skittle Squirrel didn't come to school today, he told his mother. Owl teacher said he had an accident and wouldn't be coming back. What's an accident? An accident is something that happens that isn't supposed to happen, explained Mrs. Raccoon. She lifted Chester onto her lap and folded her warm, loving arms around him. Did Owl Teacher say anything else about Skittle Squirrel? Did she say he died? I think so, said Chester, but I don't know what that means either. Mrs. Raccoon thought for a moment. Do you remember what happened to old Mr. Beaver? Chester nodded. His heart quit beating and his body didn't work anymore. That's right, Mrs. Raccoon told him. That's what happened when someone dies. She put a comforting arm around Chester's shoulders. That's what happened when Skittle Squirrel died. Oh, now that Chester understood what happened to Skittle Squirrel, his insights felt jumbled and he was very sad. Mrs. Raccoon gently stroked the top of his head. I'm very sorry about Skittle Squirrel, Chester. Chester turned and faced his mother. Skittle Squirrel is my friend and I want to play with him, he cried. Why, why won't his body work? Why doesn't his heart beat? I'm afraid that's one of those questions no forest animal can answer. It's like asking who lights up the sun then blows it out or who collects the pieces of the moon when it disappears then puts the pieces back when it's full. I know what you can do. Why don't you make a memory of Skittle Squirrel? That way you'll never forget him. How do you make a memory, asked Chester. You begin by finding something that reminds you of him. The way your piece of tree bark reminds you of the home in Hollow where we used to live. I'd rather have Skittle Squirrel than something that reminded me of him, sniffed Chester. And I know how much you'll miss him, but making a memory of him will help. She lifted Chester off her lap and wrapped his tiny hands in hers. Tell me, what was Skittle Squirrel like? Tell me what Skittle Squirrel liked. He liked butterflies, Chester said thoughtfully, and acorns. Butterflies and acorns, his mother repeated out loud. And where was Skittle Squirrel's favorite place to play? The butterfly pond. Mrs. Raccoon bent down and kissed Chester on his forehead. Chester's ear twitched and his muzzle blushed. Let's go see if butterflies and acorns can help us make a memory of Skittle Squirrel, shall we? She asked him. She led Chester outside, picking up his little brother, Ronnie, who had his curious little nose inside an anthill and walked the two cubs down the wooden path toward the butterfly pond. On their way to the pond, Chester's best friend, Casey, hopped out from behind her tree. Where are you going? 
we're going to the butterfly pond to make a memory of Skittle Squirrel. Want to come? Okay. But I don't know how to make a memory. You find something like my piece of tree bark. Only, it's not the tree bark because it has to do with butterflies and acorns. And it's something that reminds you of Skittle Squirrel. I could do that, said Casey. As the four raccoons scurried down toward the pond, more and more of Skittle Squirrel's friends asked if they too. For long, two deer, six skunks, three possums, 14 rabbits, badger, a bluebird, six morning doves, a green snake, 22 mice, four squirrels, a beaver, and two chipmunks walked, crawled, slithered, hopped, and flew to the edge of the pond. I've never seen so many butterflies, chittered Mrs. Raccoon when they arrived. There were butterflies and butterflies and more butterflies. Butterflies were everywhere. They were over the pond, in the trees, under the bushes, on the flowers, and resting on single blades of grass between the animal's feet. What do I do now, asked Chester, as a bright purple butterfly balanced on the tip of his nose. Tell me a story about Skittle Squirrel, said Mrs. Raccoon. What kind of a story? Something that happened here at the pond. Chester scrunched his nose thoughtfully, and the butterfly flew. Chester scrunched his nose thoughtfully, and the butterfly flew away. Once we were playing here about a playing here about a gazillion butterflies landed on Skittle Squirrel all at the same time. He was so covered in butterflies you could hardly see his fur. He thought that with all those butterflies stand, standing on him, he could fly like they do. So he took a running start and jumped into the air when he got to the edge of the pond. He landed splash on his belly and all the butterflies flew off. He dripped all the way back to his tree. That's a wonderful memory, laughed Mrs. Raccoon. Do you have another one? One day, Skittle Squirrel made us all late for school because a caterpillar was turning into a butterfly and he wouldn't let us miss it. We all watched the butterfly come out of its chrysalis and spread open its brawn, brand new wings. Skittle Squirrel was so excited he told all the other butterflies what happened even though they already knew. That's a lovely memory agreed Chester's mother. Suddenly Chester looked sad. One day after school, Skittle Squirrel came here and buried all of the acorns he had collected for the winter. But when he wanted them, he forgotten where he had buried them. He really loved those acorns. Everyone in school helped him look for them. Did he find them? asked Mrs. Raccoon. Chester shook his head. No. Mrs. Raccoon stood up on her back legs and looked around. She spotted a hillside not far away and patted Chester on the top of his head. I think I know where those acorns are buried, she told him. She pointed to a small group of brand new oak trees 
growing at the base of the hillside. Those are little squirrel trees, shouted Chester when he saw the young trees for himself. The forest made a skittle squirrel memory. I believe it did, Mrs. Raccoon said. Those trees, your stories and the butterflies all make a wonderful memory of skittle squirrel. Chester suddenly noticed a beautiful black and orange butterfly on the ground beside him from beside his front foot. When it, when it folded its wings, he saw the acorn beneath it. He, he gently and carefully lifted the acorn and butterfly off the ground held his breath and waited patiently until the butterfly flew away on its own. He clutched the acorn in his hand in his front paw and looked up at his mother. This acorn is the memory I'll take home, he told her. I'll keep it with me with my special piece of tree bark. Every time I look at it, I'll think of Skittle Squirrel. It's a beautiful acorn, Chester. It will make a perfect memory. With the acorn securely clutched in his paw, Chester scampered over to the Skittle Squirrel trees. I'll never forget you, Skittle Squirrel. Thank you for being my friend.